Hey guys, how are you doing? This is Zev from Z Outdoors and I hope you're having an awesome day. So today I've come down to see friend and talented craftswoman, Andrea Grad. Andrea, how are you doing? I'm well, Zed. Good to see you. You too as well. So if you're unfamiliar with Andrea, she has appeared on my channel previously where we filmed a slew of video tutorials. If you're unfamiliar with Andrea, she's originally from Romania, currently traveling here in the United Kingdom. And while she's passing through London in my home city, I've managed to catch up with her. She's very kindly taken taking some time out to film this video along with other videos we're filming in this series. So in this particular, what you're going to be looking at is Andrea's process for carving a wooden teaspoon. Now, a few things to mention before we get on with the meat and bones of this video. Number one, you can tell obviously this is a very long video. That's because she's going to leave no stone unturned, taking literally a fresh piece of wood all the way to a finished product. So there's a couple of things that aid you in that process. Number one, if you look at the bottom of this video, you'll see a timeline and all the chapters marked out. So these are all the different sections in the entire process. Process, so visually you can see where we're at. And accompanying with that, if you look in the description below, you will also see the chapters marked out there. On the left hand side of that, you'll see all the times, the actual numbers along with the timeline. YouTube has a very cool feature. If you click on those times, it will jump straight to that particular section. This is so it can help you out as you move forward and the hope is that you have a go yourself, carving a teaspoon alongside what Andrea is going to be showing in this video. It's a teaching tutorial that will enable you to jump to particular sections when you're working on that particular section yourself. Three other things, the third thing being that we're gonna put links below uh, to all the other videos. I highly recommend you go check those out. The other thing is I'm gonna put a link below to Andrea's Instagram. Instagram. You can see the plethora of work that she gets up to, as well as links to her website. Now, the last thing to mention before we get on with the video is that what Andrea has very kindly done is she's actually compiled a downloadable spoon template to accompany the teaspoon she's going to be carving in this video. And it's completely free for you to download. So in order to access that, once again, I will put a link down below, as well as pinned to the top of the comments. So with all that out of the way, Andrea, are you good to begin? Let's do it. Right guys, so I hope you enjoyed the rest of this video where Andrea Grad is going to be teaching you how to carve a teaspoon. So Andrea, <laughs> first intimation to the viewers, it's cold, hence why, <laughs> <laughs> hence why <laughs> the hat. <laughs> so in terms of where we're going to begin, obviously we're looking at wood selection. So yeah. are there any recommendations you make in regards to wood selection? Oh gosh, um, I mean, anything really that's in good shape, that's green, that uh, it can be soft, it can be hard, it doesn't really matter. Um, it, you just have to think about the size that you're going to use of the wood. If we're making a teaspoon, we don't really need that big of a piece. So here we have a bit of a spalted beech that I um, cut off of another blank that I didn't need this extra part, so this is perfect for a teaspoon. It has a little bit of a knot in here, but we can go around it. And you have toned, beautiful tones. This beach is wonderful, it's hard. It's probably gonna be a bit softer because it's spalted. So yeah, this is what we're gonna work with. And when you look at the piece of wood, whenever you're working with, a piece of wood for a teaspoon or anything, we're going to think about how we're going to position the spoon given the piece of wood that we have. So here, because this part here it's thinner, I'm thinking that we can put the bowl here. That will give us a little bit of space for the crank, just a very little crank for a teaspoon really. And we also are going to have some color in the bowl compared to the handle so that's going to be pretty as well so yeah let's let's get cracking as they say <laughs> <laughs> you're learning the english lingo <laughs> <A little bit. laughs> so where would you like to begin um well i'm first going to draw just just maybe even with a mental note or just we you can also draw with a pencil where we're going to work, uh, given that there is that knot in here, which it doesn't go all the way to the other side, so I'm not sure how big of an issue that will be, but I want to have an idea of where where am I, am I going to put the ball on this side or on this side. So for that, we're just going to, well, we're going to actually do it on this side. As I'm looking at the blank, I'm noticing that there is a little bit of a curve in the back here. So that could be part of the curve of the handle. 
and I'm going to put the bowl in here. So if I were to draw on the profile so you have a better idea, the handle is going to be like this. And we're going to come up with a bowl a little bit this way. So I hope this pencil is easy enough to see. Something like this. This is going to be the bowl and then we're going to have the handle kind of curve up. So that's what we're, we're shooting for. And this is quite a big piece of wood for a teaspoon. It's quite wide. We're not going to make that wide of a teaspoon. But it would help to just have an idea of, of the size of the teaspoon that you're going to make. So probably it's quite, quite nice. I'm going to go for a round, hand, a round um, bowl just because they're, I think they're cute. And then we're going to uh, do a little bit of a round handle as well. So um, it's, it's fun to fiddle with as a teaspoon. So yeah, that's what we're going for. So the first thing that I will do, that the first thing that I normally do when I work on a teaspoon is just go in with a crank. So usually the crank is about a third into the bowl from the handle towards the tip. So this would be a third and then two thirds away from the tip of the bowl. That's where the crank will be. We're not gonna be doing a severe crank, but just enough to give it an idea. And I'm going to go a little bit deeper because I want the spoon to be a bit uh, curved here. So I'm probably going to go about this deep into the spoon. So we're going to technically um, create this angle. So I'm going to take away all this wood that's um, above this line. So that's what we're going to do first. And you can do this with a saw. Uh, I usually just go at it with an axe. So this block is quite useful. We can just rest it on the side of the block, of the chopping block, or if you don't have this piece of wood here uh, on your chopping block, you can just tilt the wood slightly and just go uh, and start uh, chopping at an angle. Just starting where that line you marked, it's right there, and just work your way up. And remember we want to keep, we were saying that we want to keep a little bit of that curve into the handle, just slightly. So I'm going to keep that a bit and carve closer to the line not flattening this quite so we're going to take some with the with a knife when when we decide to towards the end but for now I'm just creating that gentle curve in the handle and just stopping over here at that line that we drew which will be the crank and for those curious um, what axe are you using this axe is an axe by Peter Kovach, Soulwood Creations. It's, um, I think, slightly smaller than his typical axe. Um, the handle is quite uh, recognizable. It's his style. It's really lovely, very light, very sharp, very well balanced. It's perfect for, for uh, anyone really who, it's perfect for spoon carving. If you're wanting a heavier one for bowls or for, for anything like that, get a bigger one, but this is actually, wonderful for for creating a spoon. It's very comfortable. You can ax for a long period of time with him, with it, with him. Why did I say him? Um, so it's really, really nice. So I'm now going a little bit flatter because I think it was a bit too curvy and I'm also checking on that knot. And I think we can work around it or with it. Sometimes that's a good point. Sometimes when there is a knot in a, in a blank, which is right, right here, if there is enough room on either side, I often position the bowl in a way that I get away with it and I just put the handle on one side or the other depending on how much space I have left. And here, because we're making a teaspoon, 
having a bowl about this size right here will be plenty. So we can actually move the bowl slightly to, the, to my right side and start creating the spoon over here. So this will be the center of the handle right here. So we can avoid this knot, so that's not a problem. So now that I, we've created the crank, now I'm going to uh, tilt the piece of wood to take this part of wood out. So basically above this line, I'm going to take this all out. And we're using, um, make sure before you do that, that this side is flat because we're going to put the piece of wood down and ax this way into the wood. So you want this to be stable and flat. We're going to clear out the ch chopping board as well, the chopping block, and start flattening this side. We're going to end up erasing our drawing, but we didn't really do that much drawing on it. So, so this is flat and a little bit more stable. Now, when we start axing the crank into the spoon, I'm wanting the axe to stop on the chopping block. I don't want it to slide off of it and potentially uh, hit my, my foot or my, my leg. So position the piece of wood, your spoon that you're working with in a way that when you're axing right on top of it, you're coming into the chopping block. So that's gonna keep you safe. And I'm basically approaching this by taking a little bit from this edge and just working my way into a straight line from this corner to this corner. So that's pretty much what I'm taking out, just this, this little piece of wood to create the crank of the bowl. So we're going to take a little bit and I'm gonna go all the way down because I want to make sure that I'm keeping a parallel line with the handle. So what I'm wanting is that this surface of the wood, which will be the bowl, to be parallel to this, to, to continue into the handle this way. So I don't want this to be tilted. Um, it's going to, it's a good practice to start this way. You can, if it happens to become tilted, you can adjust it later with a knife, but it's a good practice to, to start doing things this way from the beginning and assure yourself that you're not having to modify your design as you go along. So I'm cutting all the way down. And you can see how I'm holding the ax. This is my preferred way when I'm working on something that needs to be precise or on a small area of wood um, and I want to make sure that I'm not cutting too deep, so I'm bringing my hand very close to the handle and I'm basically securing the blade that it doesn't move one way or another. So that way it's almost an extension of my arm and I can direct it where I want it to go without it turning or twisting and uh, catching onto the wood in the way that I don't want it to. So. We ended up cutting the crank now. So we have the, the crank of the bowl and we have the handle. So now we just need to draw the spoon bowl on top of the wood. And we said we are going to try to avoid this knot. So we're going to draw the spoon right here. And this is the crank, which was one third into the bowl. So that means that the bowl is going to stop about here to, towards the handle. So I'm going to push it all the way to the right as much as I can. And it's a teaspoon, so it's quite small. It, they're quite fun to make. We so said we're going to try to do a, a, a roundish shape, just like so. And the handle will start, this is the middle line of the handle, so I'm going to, this pencil is not very, very good. I hope you see really well. 
So how I'm drawing a straight line, it's like, it's a, what they call, what it's called a carpenter, carpenter trick, where you put your finger, your index finger, or your, um, your index finger is probably good because you're holding your pencil with these three fingers. Put the index finger down onto the piece of wood you're wanting to measure against. And then when I want to draw a straight line, I just put the pencil down and I'm basically not moving my fingers anymore. And I'm just dragging the finger across the surface and as I'm pressing the pencil into the wood. So that keeps the same distance from the pencil tip to my finger and just creates a straight line. So that's really easy if you happen to don't have a, a ruler with you or I often also use the back side of my saw um, to do this, to, to draw a straight line or any line really. So here we have it, our little teaspoon and a handle. Now I can split the wood all the way uh, from the edge of the teaspoon. I'm not going to use this piece, so I'm going to split that off and then we're going to continue um, creating the spoon, basically taking all the wood that's not a spoon and working our way into bringing this to, to life. So I could normally, if I turn this, this around so you can see, if you're confident that your wood is a straight piece of wood, you can actually go all the way from the top down. However, because in this case we have a knot here, the wood is going to change directions around the knot and I'm not going to risk trying to split a straight piece all the way down. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to start taking the wood off in this corner up to about here and then turn the spoon around and take this, this piece off. So we'll do that first. I'm going to lean it onto one side. It's easier than chopping with your axe in, a, in an angle. So lean the piece of wood onto one side and have your axe go just up and down. It's much more safe and easier to control. So as I'm doing this, I'm looking at the spoon drawing to make sure that I don't go over it. So I just took that much wood off and now I'm going to turn it around and just take this piece off and you're going to see me do that. You're going to see the drawing right now. So I'm going to start from the bottom, just creating some stop cuts basically or just tearing into the grain and then taking those off. I'm going to do the same here. just like so. And now we can see that little knot. It just stopped right there. So uh, it wasn't too deep, but you never know when you look from the top, you don't quite know how deep it goes. So it's always fun to discover how, how the wood really looks on the inside. So the next step, I'm going to try to get as close as I can to the handle using the ax. <coughs> so because the handle tapers out, um, we're not going to be able to take too much this way with the ax, just because the grain moves up and down. Well, in this case, it's kind of going around this knot. You can even see the, the grain of the wood, and this, in this case, are the medullary rays. So we're going to see how we can carve around the handle a little bit. Basically taking as much as I can with the axe. That's what I'm aiming for because it's easier. It's easier to work with the axe than it is to work with a knife sometimes. You put much less effort into removing wood when you work with the axe. For a spoon at least. So around the handle we're pretty close. Now because the handle, I wanted to have it round, I'm going to keep this in a square. So when we're going to make it into a round handle, uh, it's easier to start doing that from a square shape. So having this as the, 
thickest piece because the handle tapers out to a square, to a round, um, we're going to have this the thickest piece. So then I can just remove excess wood all around the spoon, keeping that in mind as my reference point. So now I'm going to just work on removing wood around the bowl itself from the back side and then starting to work around the edge of the bowl. So we're first going to think about how thick do I want the spoon to be, how deep do I want it to go, and that's going to help me decide how much wood am I going to remove from the back side. And we're going to do that in basically a flat surface all the way around. And then we're going to create the curve part. So starting from basically pretty much the crank area, and I can just eyeball where that is, it's about here, I'm going to go into a straight angle all the way down towards the tip of the spoon. Something like this. And I can go even more. This is quite deep for a teaspoon, so I'll probably stop over here so I can be more comfortable taking a little bit more and there's quite a wood quite a lot of wood on the front of the spoon as well so that's something to keep in mind that actually my spoon doesn't end at the tip of this piece of wood, it ends much, much closer than that. So we can, at this point, go around the spoon, around the edge of the spoon. And the reason why I do that first is because it's much easier to remove this much thickness of the wood instead of that much if I were to go around the spoon. So at this point, this is quite thick here, but um, probably because we have a flat surface at this point, I'm going to remove as much as I can from the back and come as close to the shape that I want to. And we decided that this is the thickest point, right? So from that angle, I'm going to go and taper down towards the actual bowl, uh, like so something like that. The spoon is going to be maybe about this deep and curve a little bit. And the handle is going to be a little bit thinner, but I'm going to adjust that with a knife. So I can safely remove all the wood behind that drawing, that line that we drew. And I can just do that. The spoon is resting on the flat surface, so that that's quite safe at this point. So something like this. We have the bowl of the teaspoon, which doesn't have to be quite deep. This is plenty. And then we're going to uh, work on the handle. It's going to be much thinner here and turning into a um, cone, basically a round cone. And now, because we're all done with the back of the spoon and such, we can easily remove the wood around the bowl itself. So I'm going to start going from this point, just removing this little bit and just going all the way um, out into a into a pointed, basically a pointed shape. I'm going to just go in a straight line here a little bit and a straight line here and just gently remove that part because um, it's quite at the tip. Your, grain is going across this way. So when we, if we were to remove it straight across, we, re we risk for it to tear. So I'm going to try to go really slow and maybe um, use some, some other ways of cutting it. You can either use a saw or, so I'm gonna go about that much. Um, using the tip of the, the ax, holding it like I was showing you earlier, this way because it's quite precise and I want it to be 
going exactly where I want it to go. I don't want to accidentally cut too much. And now I'm cutting on the other side where I don't see the drawing because I'm right on top of it. So I'm, I am checking quite often. Um, to make sure that I don't go off the line. So here you have this little point. So right now it would be easy to just use a saw or we can basically we can use a the axe just because it's quite a small piece of wood. It's quite a uh, thin piece of wood so we can Guillotine, it's like using a motion just like you would with a guillotine. Not that you have a guillotine to use, but just chopping this way, just resting, starting with the wood, with the axe right on the tip and just pressing down. It's like those knives that you use to cut herbs with that are. Um, this way and that's why this axe is quite lovely because of the shape of it. It's curved with um, With a straight knife it would still work, but um, This allows you to uh, To have this rocking motion and it's really nice to to use for particularly um, these kinds of cuts So we have gone around the bowl now I'm going to try to remove some of the wood here and we're just going to go gently around the bowl just like so. I'm using the tip of the axe at this point um, and leaning the piece of wood onto the edge of the board, the chopping board, chopping block. So I'm going a bit farther away, about a couple of millimeters, three, four, three millimeters away from the bowl, from the um, from the bowl and from the handle. So just to be safe, and because I'm using an axe, and it's not always, it is a quite a small shape that I'm creating a small piece of wood. So I'm wanting to avoid accidentally hitting in the wrong place. So I'm giving myself some some space by staying away um, a few extra millimeters from the actual drawing that I have. So I'm doing that on the other side as well. What this is, it's exactly what you would do with a stop cut with, an, uh, with a saw. It's just another way that you can get close to the handle by uh, not if you don't have a saw with you. Um, so you can just work on your spoon using an axe and get just the same results. So like so. You can see that here I just got really, really close to the line, quite on the line, and that's fine. I'm just going to continue all the way To that point that I created. So now, because these are technically stop cuts, I can go up from the handle, alongside the handle, up to that edge, very gently, trying to remove this piece of wood right here. All, everything that's above this point towards the handle, just that piece. So we're going to Gently go down the wood, not hitting too hard, for one, because your spoon is resting right on the tip, on the chopping block, so you don't want to damage this tip. It's quite thick, but sometimes it can be a little bit more frail. So we're going to do the same thing on the other side, just gently removing some of the wood that's going along the side. And here when you get close to the bowl, just be super gentle. You don't want to hit into the bowl um, because that will create a fracture. It'll start cracking when it dries. So if you, if you can, um, you can also use the, the bump cuts, which are 
something like this, where you position the axe into the wood and then the gravity will just slowly take it down towards the bowl without you having to hit and you can control it a little bit more that way. It's a much more gentle cut. So there we have it. This is the blank of the teaspoon. This is going to be much thinner here and just tapering out into a round hand handle. And that's it. We're gonna go into the knife work next. Okay, so we are now inside where it's warm and toasty and we're going to start the knife work for this teaspoon. So this is the blank we just did and the first thing that I do when I work on a spoon, I go around the outside profile and make sure that that is where I want it to be and it's close to the line and it's the final shape of the the spoon so I don't have to modify that anymore and it creates a reference point because after we do the side profile we're going to start working on the top profile and we will have a point of reference um, pretty much having a shape that we are going to follow. So let's do that. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about all the holds that I'm using. This is a little bit trickier when you work with a, with a small shape. Uh, it's, um, you have to hold it quite close to you and it doesn't give you that much room to play uh, because you don't have a big piece of wood to hold on to. So we will most likely do a lot of bracing it and working towards ourselves um, and fiddling with it pretty much all throughout. So I'm going to start working around the shape, around the, the drawing that we, we did. And in this case, as you see in the drawing, so we're not going to have a tapered handle here. We're going to go straight into the bowl at 90 degrees, which is quite easy to do. Um, it's much easier than having to create that curve into the tight corners. That's a, um, something that a lot of people struggle with. So we're going to avoid that and make it easy for ourselves here. And... If people are curious, uh, what knife are you using? Yeah, this is um, also by um, Peter. Peter Kovac is a wonderful knife. Um, it's a regular size Lloyd, I think it's a 80, 80 millimeters blade, and I quite like it. It also has a round um, bevel, oh, I'm sorry, a round uh, back, spine. a round spine. It's just something that I use to burnish my spoons with, actually, the handles and so forth. And it's quite thin at the tip. The, um, blade it stays sharp quite well and quite a long time which I, I prefer and the handle is very comfortable so yeah it's a wonderful knife I highly recommend it I've been using it while I traveled all these last few months that's pretty much the only knife that I've had with me and the chip carving knife uh, which is also by him and I didn't miss any of my other tools so that's what we're going to use today. So I'm coming at a 90 degrees here, just going around the shape. And slowly keeping in mind the grain orientation. So from the highest point, if you were to keep this on the, in a profile, from the highest point down, and again from the highest point down because this slightly tapers and from the highest point down this way as well. And for this particular cut I am doing a thumb push. You can also on this other side we're going to, you can also use this 
but we're going to get there as well. So for now, I'm just working around the drawing that we did. I'm trying to stay symmetrical, so I'm checking. Sometimes when we draw a spoon, um, we see it from one direction, so from I drew it this way, but if I were to turn it around, you and I might see that it's not quite symmetrical in the bowl. So make sure that you look at your spoon from all directions. Just sometimes your, your eyes can play a trick on you, and especially if you're making a symmetrical spoon. And also allow yourself room to be playful and make something else. If you make a mistake and it doesn't look quite right, um, it can always turn into an asymmetrical spoon and nobody will know. So there we have it. We have just about this much. I might take a little bit more at the tip because I wanted it to be a little bit more round. So that way it's going to make it a bit more round at the tip, like so. Now I'm going to turn it around and work on this edge. And even immediately as I turned it upside down, I can see that this particular corner I need to do, or corner, this particular side, I need to take some off because it, it doesn't, it's not it's symmetrical to the other side. Just that simple turning the spoon around allowed me to, to do that, to see that. For this cut, I'm going to kind of go over the cuts that I'm using just to, to offer that as well in this video. So I am holding the knife at the base of my uh, fingers and wrapping my fingers around. So that allows me to pull the knife towards me with my fist. The thumb is out of the way. This is the same like peeling potatoes, but when we peel potatoes, we usually, well, the knife, the kitchen knives are not very sharp, so we sort of stop in our, uh, or I do, <laughs> stop in our thumb. But you don't want to do that because this knife is quite sharp, so move your finger out of the way, still use it as a uh, anchoring point and bring your fist, you're closing your fist as you cut and just take a little bit at a time. It's going to feel awkward at the beginning. It did for me because I'm used to that motion where I want the thumb to be under, like right in front, but you'll get used to it, so just keep practicing it. That's one way. Of course, you can also do this thumb push cut, which is probably one of the cuts that I've used the most and it can be really comfortable. Here, because we, you can actually find ways to hold onto the spoon, to you pretty much do the whole spoon with the push cut if you thumb push if you want, but here you can also um, what other cut I could no, just about this one I guess for this particular angle. So I'm just keep checking. You're gonna just see me check quite a lot for symmetry and turning it around. And it helps that my pants are dark. Um, you want to look at either a dark surface with no colors for distraction or um, against the sky because it's a really bright kind of a white canvas. So is that an excuse to go shopping? That's an excuse to go shopping <laughs> for black tights. Absolutely a must have for all spoon carvers. <laughs> so we are getting really close to finishing the bowl, just the side profile of the bowl. It smells, smells so good. It smells like, this is a piece of wood that uh, it's actually from Romania and I left it to spalt. I didn't, I, f I forgot it to spalt. <laughs> I forgot it on the ground when I went traveling in London and uh, all over England and Israel and so forth. And 
it got covered with leaves. And right now, I'm not sure if there were walnut leaves that were all around, uh, but it smells like uh, the walnuts. I don't know if you know, that just smells like my childhood, like green walnuts. It smells like fall. It just smells wonderful. So I always get um, nostalgic when I when I smell this. It's it's almost smells just like the turn of the seasons. Now we're we done. We went a little bit on this side, just from here down. We went all around the the bowl. Now we're going to go up this this side. And for here, I'm going to use the thumb push. The only thing is that I don't. I'm not able to see if I'm staying close to the line or not. So I'm not going to be too adventurous and and keep cutting. I'm going to check every few cuts just to make sure that I'm staying close to the line. And the reason why that's important for this particular spoon is because we're making a round handle. And for a round handle, you want to have a square piece of wood, a square handle that we're going to turn into a round. So I want to make sure that I don't go too thin uh, on one side or the other. That will pretty much throw off our shape. So I'm trying to be um, precise in that way, just to secure that the shape that I want to create is there in the end. So keep going around the edges. So pretty much we have the whole shape up to about here. Now we're going to work on this side. And because the wood here tapers out, the grain is going down in a straight line like this. So for these, if this knife is the grain of the wood, if I were to cut up into it this way, it's going to tear, it's just going to break. So I need to come down from the tip down. So that's going to be requiring us to use this cut where you brace the spoon in between your chest and your fingers, these particular two fingers. And then that's going to allow these fingers to push the blade towards you in a safe way. So figure out, I mean, you have quite a area here to work. So if you need to keep it close to you or if you need to bring it down, if you can also bring it into your stomach, here it also depends on your eyesight and also the, the comfortable space that you, you feel comfortable working in. I'm not pushing, I'm not pushing towards myself with this knife, with this hand at all. It's just holding it steady. My wrist is quite firm. All the effort is happening from these three fingers. So basically, if I were to hold this knife this way, that's all I'm doing. I'm not bringing this towards me. And that's going to secure that I don't accidentally stab myself, basically, because the wood is quite hard and um, it might slip at any point. So you don't want to, to create any injuries. So this is one of the hardest cuts. It was really hard for me to learn this, but it's so, so incredibly useful. So here's, um, I'm gonna just clean up a little bit right this corner here and then show you this edge. So we did this edge, it's slowly tapering towards the handle. We're gonna do the same onto here. And you can see there is a little bit of wood right outside of this line that we drew. So we're just gonna clean that up and create a clean line all the way down. Same motion, same cut. Just pressing, taking a little bit at the time. You don't want it, you don't want necessarily to be bold and take a whole lot, just take a little bit. It's safer and easier. And it's also easier on your chest bone 
it's quite a sensitive area. I used to carve right on my on my sternum, right uh, on my diaphragm, and eventually just because I was tensing it to brace against the cut, it eventually became quite tense, and uh, I had to, like, it just created a little bit like breathing problems, and uh, it's just something that I guess as as we carve and we get excited and focused, you just don't pay attention about these things. So be mindful of, of the muscles that you're using and make sure you rest and all those things. I think Dan made a really wonderful video about, didn't it, Zed, with, with uh, stretching and so forth. Yeah, that's on my channel with Dan Lawrence. Yes, yes, highly recommend you watch that. Okay. So we have the two sides tapering out. We're going to need to do the back. And when you look at here, it's still a square. And that's what we want. We want it to be a square. Now from the profile, this is the thickest part that we wanted to use. And this, we want it to be the thinner part. So I'm going to come a little bit more in a straight line here tapering from this point all the way down here. So we're going to work on the back side and on the front side right now because the profile of the spoon is all done. So same cut, same hold. We're going to come from the top. And I took a little bit too much here, so I'm just going in front of it and cleaning it up because it just, for a second, it didn't quite feel safe to go so much wood all at once. And that's something you will, you will just become familiar with as you're, as you're working on, on the spoons you make. You'll just know that, oh, that's a bit too much, a bit too much at the second. So as you can see, I'm going on a straight line and I want to go all the way down here. And now, because I have quite a bit of wood to hold on to, I can switch to the thumb push. And the reason why that is, is because I was getting really close to here and it just didn't feel quite safe. So now I can just adjust. And I'm checking to make sure I'm staying in a straight line and Gosh, I wish you could smell this. It just smells so good. So, there we go. It's quite in a straight line, a little bit wobbly, but it doesn't quite matter. I'm being a bit finicky at this point. And now we're going to do the same thing, straight like this, but basically following this line when we're going to come up to about there. And that's the back of the spoon? That's going to be the back of the spoon. Yes. And usually when you make a spoon, they, it requires quite a lot of material here, especially if you're going thin onto the sides. You want it to be thicker here. But this is a teaspoon and you're not going to really hammer this with. So it, it can be a little bit more delicate and we're going to make it in a way that it's actually still, it still holds and has quite a lot of wood in the back, but it's not going to be your classic um, thicker here and just tapering down towards the handle. It's going to be quite round um, and kind of a round handle that just kind of pops out of the bowl. So we're gonna, we're gonna try to give that a go and see how it looks. We're gonna go in the same direction here, if the wood lets us. And that's where you can adjust and see, oh, maybe it doesn't want to go that direction. It didn't feel like it, but it actually it's okay. So same exact cut and hold all the way until it feels safe to do so in a 
for in a flat surface keeping that square ish shape and pro the, from the profile you can see that I'm slowly coming closer and thinner towards the, the bowl. And I'm going to stop about here and switch to the other cut for more comfort and more control. And I'm checking and I'm still checking. And the reason why I'm going to, I want to do this is um, this particular shape is, well, one is fun. It's a little bit more different. And I'm just checking to see that the surfaces are um, flat, just to make sure that I'm staying in the way that I wanted to. And here I'm going to stop just as, as such because I want to work on the bowl first and see how that looks on the back. So that's what we have. Just adjusting little angles that I see from different, just looking at it from all angles and from the profile and want to make sure that it looks good and how I want it to be. Okay, so we did the handle. That's how the handle is going to look. Is it turning into a cutie? And now I'm going to work on the... I'm actually going to do the edge of the bowl, which is just the profile of the side of the bowl. And I'm going to turn my knife. I just want to... What I'm doing now, I'm just working onto this curve. Right now you can see that it's just a flat surface and a flat surface quite at a sharp angle and meeting in the crank. And I want to create that curve um, that's going to be the profile of the bowl. And this is tricky to do with a teaspoon just because it's a tiny little shape. But I'm basically, right now, when we asked this was quite flat, it was a flat surface. So instead of keeping it flat, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to create a little bit of a curve, moving my knife this way. If the wood allows you, you can do the whole thing from the top, creating a little bit of a curve all the way to the uh, handle. We're, we'll see if that happens, if that, if, that's, if that allows us. And what I'm doing, I'm literally just cutting as you can see, just the edge. I'm not cutting the whole surface. I'm just cutting the edge of the spoon. I'm going around the rim and establishing the rim of the spoon. And I'm trying to create a continuous line in a curve all around the rim. So when you look at it now, it's more of a curve, whereas on this side, it's more of a straight angle. So that's what we're going to try to mirror on the other side, which is always the hard part. And the way I do that, the way I mirror a curve that we created on the other side is looking at it just this way, as you're looking at it from this direction down. So right now you can see that there is a little bit of a curve down, this plane went down into the spoon. So when I'm going to work on this side, I'm going to look at it this way, just as you are now, making sure that I go the same depth as I went on this side. So I'm going to take a little bit and then I'm going to check looking at it this way and making sure that I'm going to go as deep as I went on the other side. And the left side is also the hardest part. I'm right-handed and we can work at it this way. That's one way. Or you can hold it like this in between your fingers. If it, it, usually, if it's a bigger spoon, you can. Um, but I won't be able to do that here because I'm really close to my fingers. But that's another way. If the spoon was bigger, that was another way that you can work on this side. 
but here I'm not going to risk that, so I'm going to cut this way. So again, I'm cutting just the edge, and you can see I'm just kind of going around, just cutting the edge, creating that curve, and I'm going to check to see. And what I'm doing, I'm literally just closing one eye and focusing on the point of the spoon and trying to see compared to this plane and compare the two, the two levels, the two surfaces, if they are at the same depth, if they're matching for symmetry. So we need to take a, go a little bit lower, a little bit deeper into the bowl. And I really want to try this way as well, because I'm kind of wanting it to... Oh, there we go. I'm wanting to create this curve a little bit better. Just like so. So we created now that curve similar to the sides, to, to the other side, and I'm going to check. And it does look like it wants to go it would benefit to go a little bit deeper. It would be a bit more, a bit more symmetrical that way. Just like so. And this is where the grain changes a little bit, right here into the crank. So I'm going to try to go the other way around as well. Just to make sure I don't have any transition here that breaks and there are no fibers that break. I don't mind if there are some in here, but as long as the edge is fine, just that three millimeter, four, four millimeters, that's what I'm looking for. I'm gonna check again. And now, this side is a little bit taller, it's a little bit lower than this side, so I'm just going to adjust a little bit over here. And the reason why I do this now is because I want that profile of the spoon, just the rim of it, I want it to be the final shape. So when I start scooping, I don't have to bother with the edge. I won't have to clean that edge. Other people carve it differently, and maybe you do as well, where you carve the spoon first, and then you adjust the rim. That's totally fine as well. There's no one way to do a spoon. So now you get to see my method a little bit, or my rhythm. Um, so there we have it. We have the profile on both, on, on the handle on all sides. We have the rim. Now I'm going to work on the back of the bowl. And the reason why I do the back of the bowl first is because I am very tactile when I feel the bowl and I know how deep I want to go into the, uh, into the bowl. So I, I'm wanting the surface to be finished so I can use that as my reference and feel my way around. And that's why we're doing the bowl first. There's no, no um, rule about that either. So I'm rounding this up and just keep looking on the profile because I want to see how the curve of the whole shape flows. So I'm looking on the profile just to see, does that look good? Is that what I'm wanting it to look like? At least at, um, I'm looking at this line right here, the back line, and how does that flow? And if, that's, if I'm happy with that, then I'll continue. But if I want this to be different, I now have quite a bit of material to adjust this curve. So for now, I'm happy with it. and I'm going to keep working. Here you can also use the chest 
lever, I think it's called, just pull, where you're pulling your arms apart with the back muscles of your shoulder blades, the, or the, the muscles of between your shoulder blades, really. And that's, you're not really pushing with your elbows. It's a really powerful cut for removing a lot of material all at once. So I'm working on the tip of the spoon at the moment, as you can see. And from there, I'm going to leave some belly here, but start rounding this end and keep that rim all the way around. And that's going to look, this is a little bit more finicky to work with when you are working on a teaspoon because there's hardly any wood to hold into the bowl. So we have to be quite careful and slow when we do this. So I'm just rounding this area here now. And I'm going to leave as much here to start making this a round shape. So this is where that round handle is going to just pop out of the bowl. That's how we were. That's what I envisioned when I decided to make this shape, when, when we started doing this at the beginning. And that's something that, of course, you can adjust and change your mind about the design at any point, really. So I'm just kind of going in back and forth in between different cuts, depending on what direction I'm working on to the wood and what, how much wood I have to hold on to and all of that. Just it, it, at some point, it just sort of becomes secondhand and it's just automatically um, something that your, your body goes towards. But when you're just starting, you can practice one movement and get really good at it and then introduce another one. That's really a, a, a good way to, to start practicing different ways of cutting. So now I'm continuing that rim all the way around towards the handle. And I'm also checking at this point to make sure that, that the back of the bowl is symmetrical with the other side that I finished. And I'm just using my thumb and also checking to make sure that the rim is, is the same uh, thickness as the other side. So this part here from, from this half down looks pretty good to me on both sides. And I'm going to just take this corner and then we're going to round, we're going to round the the, the the handle. So yeah, this is where I have to sort of improvise what what in what way am I going to hold it because it's quite tiny and finicky. I just happen to have sm smaller hands, so that's easier to work for me. And if you have bigger hands, you'll, you'll just have to kind of find your way through and adjust. So from the profile, now you're kind of getting an idea. We have the teaspoon and the handle, how that's going to, how that's going to look. And I'm going to take a little bit more from the thickness of the bowl. It's 
So here's when I'm, I'm trying to secure it in between my thumb, this part of my thumb, and my, my index finger. And while pushing with this part of my thumb, it's just all these different ways that that you're you learn eventually to just work with a piece of wood that you have, and it it's interesting because spoon carving really creates a sort of dexterity to some degree from working with different shapes and. Okay, so I'm coming now right into the handle. Oops. And looking at the profile, I'm wanting maybe to take a little bit more from right at the belly. And again, I'm doing this, keeping in mind that I want to just sort of be done with the hand with the back of the bowl when I'm when I'm finished with when I'm finished with this step the back of the bowl is going to be as close to the final shape as possible you can modify it a little bit more but that's going to dictate how the inside of the bowl is going to look for me so that's the bowl right now the back of the bowl so we're going to work on the handle and then we're going to start carving the inside okay so the next step we're going to now that the back of the bowl is done um, we're going to work on rounding the handle so we have a squarish shape um, and if I take a little bit some of the edges off it will you will see that it's quite quite a square so to create a to create a round shape we're basically going to take the corners off to create an octagon and then we're going to take those corners that we create all those eight corners and take those in and we're gently working ourselves into a round shape it's worth maybe pointing out that if people haven't seen, we've done a chopstick video where you taught how to carve yes. chopsticks. So essentially the same principles outlined in that video exactly, yes. is what you're going to be doing here. So mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. Give that a go, give that a look, give that a try. Um, it's really fun to, to create round handles. It, it, there's so much practice in creating facets as well. You practice creating a straight surface there are just so many ways that so many ways that that they, it's helpful for your for your craft so i'm just taking the facet off i can go quite bold with this and i'm basically trying to create equal facets about this distance here here on all four corners and that's why it's helpful to have a square um, because you don't have to adjust the thickness and it just kind of lands you at the end of it into a perfect round, just like so. So we have two of them and we're going to do the same on the other side. And because here it's sometimes and often it's going the other direction the grain is going from here up you can you can adjust for that but it seems like we're fine going this direction on on this side as well and the same so we have one two three we're going to do another one here so how i do that i just position the knife just the way that I wanted to cut and I'm from the beginning establishing the angle of the facet you're now basically creating facets so if you want to create a faceted spoon at some point a faceted handle this is how you would go about it 
and you know doing that all the way around and adjusting I'm also feeling with my hand to make sure that there are no bumps and that's a facet for you right there. So now we have an octagon, well, ish. It's a little bit more squished of an octagon, um, which is fine. We can, we can adjust that to make, to make it more of a round when we start taking those corners. So we started with four corners because it was a square. Now we have eight corners and to start creating the round shape we're basically going to take those corners down just the way we we did the facets. So I'm slowly adjusting a little bit. I want to go all the way down towards the handle just to see the whole shape. I just want to make sure I have the full visual. On some of the sides we took a little bit more, but that can be easily adjusted. So, just like so, we have now an octagon, which means there are eight facets. So all these, these eight corners that we've created, we're going to mellow those down and just start taking those down, just like so. So we're going to position our knife and just take those corners off. And it doesn't have to be in a straight line at this point. You can literally just start taking corners off and create a transition. Right now, between this facet and this fa facet is just this one line of a transition. So what we're wanting to do is eliminate that and start creating a round transition between these, these two points. And we're going to do that all the way around and that is how you create a round handle. Just go all the way down, the same here. Just like so. Just like so and it just kind of go all the way around. And now you can see that right here we have a round surface. like so. And some of the areas you will have to go again just because they might be a bit bumpier. But and that's how we arrive at our final handle shape. Something like this. Where it can be a little bit thinner and we can absolutely make it a little bit thinner here by being a little bit more aggressive in our, in our cuts. And at this point, you're, you can go a little bit more aggressive. You can take bigger, bigger slices, bigger shavings. And you can afford that because the overall shape is the shape that you wanted. So you're not going to veer off too much if you go bold. Just, just keep the same pressure all the way down. Something like that. And the next step will be to just do the, the bowl and where we have a teaspoon. like that. And here we can adjust 
the handle and the bowl interface. With all these pretty curlies. Just like so. Okay, so like this. Here's our teaspoon, which is fun to kind of play with. I love round handles. And now we're going to just carve the, the bowl. And of course you can adjust and make that make it thinner if you want to, but I'm gonna just leave it at that for for time purposes. And for a teaspoon, I'm going to use a scorp. This is a tiny scorp from Lee, um, Lee Stoffer. He makes wonderful, wonderful scorps. You probably know about about them. Um, I particularly like this because it's wonderful for, for scoops as well and um, all sorts of, of things like small, yeah, small scoops and small teaspoons and even regular spoons. It's wonderful for that as well. I'm just adjusting a little bit of a, of a rim that I saw here that it's not quite even. Like so. All right. Let's, let's do the bowl. So this is a teaspoon. It's going to be a little bit harder to carve. Um, because it's so small. So what I normally do, I just imagine the rim. How thick do I want the rim to be? We cut it around, but it's quite, it's just the flat surface at the moment, like more of an, an inclined surface all the way around. But I'm going to decide how thick of a rim do I want around. And how I do that, I just place the tool just at the at a certain thickness, a certain distance from the edge to the inside of the bowl, and I think, well, is that is that I just evaluate? Is that how do I like the look of that? Do I want it to be thinner? And I do like the look of that um, uh, that thickness all around. This is where you play with design. Um, and I like that thickness because the handle is a little bit thicker. So that feels to me like it's balancing well. And I'm going to keep that all the way around. You can easily draw a line at that thickness all the way around if that's easier. Or you can just work your way like I'm going to do now. Just work my way on the edge of the bowl, kind of trying to keep that same, that same thickness of a rim. I think it's also important to stress that people use whatever hook knife they have. Yes, it's absolutely, yeah, if I actually have a wood tools hook that has um, a bit of a, uh, the compound hook has the top of it, the end of it is quite, quite hook, quite a hook, so you can definitely use that. I just happen to have this um, as, a, as an option but any hook would work. Um, and with the teaspoon, it's wonderful because you don't need to go that deep into the bowl. So a flat, a flat hook works just as well. Um, you will just have to work with a, certain, with a certain part of the hook that will um, prevent the rest of it to catch onto the spoon. So that's just one thing to keep in mind. So I have a mental note at this point how thick that rim is. So I am I'm just drawing that basically all around all around the, 
the edge. And as you can see, I'm not scooping anything from the middle at the moment. I'm just focusing on the rim. And if, I, if the spoon was bigger, I would start <coughs> scooping a little bit out of the bowl just because um, it's a little bit easier to work not having a lot of material to work with uh, and not a lot of material in my way. So I'm not going to bother doing the finish of the inside, but I'm just taking some of the material out. So I'm keeping the same thickness all the way around, trying to brace the spoon in between my fingers. And what's fun about this hook is that you can work in the opposite direction as well. And you can absolutely do that with a regular hook, um, having a lefty one and a right one, or just positioning the spoon in a way that allows you to work the left side and the right side. So I'm gently staying with that rim by putting the knife at the distance that I want it to be and working my way around. And I'm taking just a little bit at the time because I don't want to damage that rim. I don't want to take too much and now all of a sudden I have quite a thin rim that I have to modify all the way around. So that's why drawing on the spoon can be really helpful. And I'm going to dig a little bit more in the back here. Just like so. And then at this point I'm feeling with my fingers just to make sure that I'm feeling like I'm getting closer to the final thickness on this side. And I just need to work now on this bit of wood here. And I'm bracing it again uh, up against my chest, just like I was doing when I was, it's exactly the same motion, except that now I'm rotating my wrist because I'm, my intention is to scoop. So with the knife, we were going straight down. My wrist was locked. With this, I'm wanting to scoop so I am scooping as I'm pressing the tool towards me. Just like so. Taking a little bit at a time. I don't want to dig too much. I'm not pressing too hard because I don't want to rip through the bowl. So this is where you just learn how to just practicing. Just get to know your tool and the wood that you're working with. And here I'm going to try to take some of it right across the grain. Just like so. Making sure that I don't disturb and I don't cut into this area with the back of my blade. Just like so. Just scooping out the inside and we're almost done with it. And teaspoons are just so lovely. A lot of a lot of people, myself included, have I really like small, delicate Things. And when you, when you see a tiny little spoon, it just makes you smile. So they're fun to make. I highly recommend you try making one. I'm going to go a little bit deeper as well here because I already did on the other side. And try to mirror that on this end. And in the area where the crank was is where the direction of the grain changes. So that's where you have to be a little bit more careful. And 
and we're going to take the center part out. Just like so. This makes such a wonderful teaspoon for coffee or for sugar or spices, anything like that. Really fun to make. Okay, we are done. I would maybe take a little bit more in the bowl, just a little bit more to have a better transition in that curve. Usually a spoon, when you make a spoon like an eating spoon, you would want it to be a bit more flat at the first two thirds from the tip towards the handle. It just feels better in the, ha in the mouth, but a teaspoon is just a teaspoon and you're gonna just stir things with and maybe eat delicious desserts with, but there we have it. We're just going to adjust the, um, now looking at it, um, just a little bit of a design thing. I would go a bit thinner here, maybe keeping this thickness, but I would go a little bit thinner here if, if we can definitely try that really quickly. Just because the bowl is so thin, it, bears a bit more of a delicate shape. Thin, I mean little. The bowl is so little. A delicate shape handle would suit it better. So I'm just quickly taking some of this belly of the, of the handle. This is where you kind of play with the design of a spoon. You can always adjust like I was saying earlier, you have something in mind and then when you see it done, you can adjust and given that you're, you're leaving enough wood to do so. So now that we have the spoon done, we just need to do the rim here, the edge, just because this is quite a sharp angle. And here's where you can, I'm just gonna flatten this area. I'm, I'm slightly slicing, not so much cutting across, just because I don't want the grain to tear on the opposite side, especially because this is spalted wood. Um, so some of the areas where it's more sappy, like here, it can be a little bit more um, granular. So I am right now going to just take the edge of it off by cutting a little at an angle all the way across. And that's gonna make it more comfortable to use I don't know, might have a better look. You can absolutely leave it sharp as well if you want, but there we have it. It's a little, little teaspoon. You can paint the handle if you want or just leave it like that, but there it is. So a couple of questions to wrap up the process. Yeah. So at this point, Obviously, we're going to dry it. So what is your personal drying process for a teaspoon like this? Mm, yeah, it's quite a thin piece of wood. So um, if you're a little bit slower in making it, by the time you're done, it's probably just from the heat of your hand going to be half dry. So um, like any other piece of wood, uh, because this is really thin, um, if it's really hot in your place or where you are, just all these shavings just 
put it with all these shavings in an open paper bag or plastic bag, it doesn't really matter. And I mean, these ones, just as I'm touching them right now, they're absolutely dry. So by the evening, this is going to be a dry spoon. Um, if, if it's not terribly hot in your place right now, most, most places it's, it's cold in the winter right now, so I would just leave it on the table. It should be fine. Um, if you have any, if by mistake you've had some nicks or something, I would recommend to put it with the shavings and let it dry quite slowly. If you're confident that you don't have any any tears or anything, then it's absolutely fine to leave it, to leave it like this. And the next thing, after it's dry, you can oil it. You can use walnut oil, linseed oil. Um, linseed is quite yellow, so it might change the color of the wood. So I recommend walnut oil uh, or um, a mixture of tongue oil and um, some sort of solvent. But walnut oil is the easiest one. It polymerizes wonderfully and a little bit slower, but it's fine. You can just, after it's dry and you oil it, then you can put it on your heater or um, somewhere where it's hot um, and it will create that wonderful film around the spoon that will protect it from stains and from, from wear and it'll last a long time. That's it. You can also bake it uh, if you want to. A lot of people bake their spoons. I haven't baked a spoon in a very long time, but something that it's spalted like this, it's not maybe worth baking, but if you have a wood piece of wood that it's a little bit more on the bland side and you want to have some grain pop, uh, you can bake it and it'll be really nice and wonderful. That's it. You have a okay. teaspoon. And so the final question is, yeah. what tea would you recommend to test it out with? <laughs> Definitely with biscuits. That's and, it. Uh, <laughs> we had a long talk about biscuits. Um, oh gosh. English tea, the black, yes, black tea. What is it, the builder's tea? Builder's tea, yes, it's very milky. <laughs> Usually two tea bags. <laughs> big, big yes. cup, so. But, yo, know, any tea, just some honey. You can even use it for honey. You can use it for, for green tea to take the tea out with. I mean, so many uses for this little thing. And it's, I mean, look at it. It's just so darn cute. Little cute, cute little things. Teaspoons, make some, definitely make some. And let me know what shape you're gonna make if you're going to make some. That's it. So there you have it, my friends. That is a wrap for this video. The Teaspoon Queen, Andrea. Oh, thank you. So <laughs> That's your new name now. <laughs> Thank you so much. That was really, really awesome to see for yeah. myself as well. Um, it was fun to make. Yeah, it was really, I really, really cool. enjoyed it. We, we just realized actually part way through filming, it's the first time I've covered a teaspoon tutorial on the channel. I've done a pocket spoon with Deborah Schnabley Morell, whose studio we're actually filming at, so a huge okay. thanks to her. Um, it's the first video I've ever saw. That was it. Carving. Ironically, yeah, yes. coming back full circle. So there, no, thank you so much once again. It was a real, real Pleasure. treat to see it as well as to document for people to learn yeah. at home. So guys, to wrap up this video, a few things. Number one, as mentioned at the very beginning, this is part of a broader series I have been filming with Andrea on this visit down and a previous visit down. Highly recommend you go check those videos out. Links to those will be in the description. Also, as I mentioned at the very beginning, Andrea has very kindly created a downloadable PDF template to follow the same teaspoon that she's carved in this video and it's completely free for you to download. So that template alongside with this video will be a fantastic companion for you to have a go yourself. To access that, I'll put a link below in the description as well as pinned to the top of the comments. Also, as I mentioned at the very beginning, of this video. This video has been timestamped, as you've seen by the end of this video, it has been very detailed with every kind of 
process elaborated on. So like I said, a timestamp you can look along the bottom of this video as well as in the below description. And finally, it would mean the world to me if you gain any value from this video whatsoever. I ask one thing from you is that to go and check out Andrea on Instagram, link will be below in the description, and to give her a follow. Following from that, one thing I will add is if you do carve a teaspoon using Andrea's template and this video, which we highly recommend you do, it will mean the world to me and Andrea if you tag her. Yes, please do. On there Instagram. There are a bazillion kinds of teaspoons, so be playful and you know what you're making. That would be really fun to see. Love yeah. To. Yeah. And so, yeah, give her a tag uh, on the Instagram. And when you go to the website to download the template, I would encourage you to have a look around. Andrea produces a fantastic array of utensils and wares and woodenware. Um, she's getting quite prolific now within this green woodworking community, not just here in the UK, but across Europe and other countries as well. She also is teaching now. She'll be at a lot of the events uh, at the time of filming this in 2023 in the UK. But regardless of when you're watching this, if you go to her website, you can see the absolute plethora of things that she gets up to. And also on her Instagram, you can see the back catalog of things that she gets up to on her travels and everything else that she's doing, as well as when she's back in her native yeah. Romania. Yeah. Fighting off vampires <laughs> with pointy teaspoons. <laughs> with teeth. <laughs> see? Chopsticks. And a necklace of garlic. Yes. That's what it is. It. So, guys, really do appreciate you watching up until the end if you have watched this video in its entirety and once again a sincere thank you to you andrea yeah, for allowing you. me to document your process and, and thank guys you for watching it yeah that's it you were about to do my you were about to do my <laughs> outro for me <laughs> getting in there i'll be filming with her so much she knows my outro <laughs> off by heart so guys that is a wrap for this video once again really do appreciate you watching and once again links to everything down below if you have any questions or queries instagram is a way to go to hit andrea up and I shall see you on the next installment. Until then, I hope whatever you're doing, you have a blessed day, a blessed week ahead. For myself, Zell Outdoors, and then Drew Grad. peace out. <laughs>